sound okay. the Rebbe says we have 60 days of Simcha it's the vat of all negative things some of the people here were uh, attending the class this afternoon the, this morning this afternoon there was a class in Manhattan but the topic that was chosen there for the class was was inspiration, and how to bring inspiration, how to become inspired, how to bring inspiration into our daily life, our down-to-earth uh, engagements in life. And since this especially is a time of simple, and since it's, the, it's correct the truth in its own right, we explain that the, that the most inspired state of being is when a person is in simple. Uh, the simple and inspiration always go together. You'll never find a a depressed person that's inspired. That uh, doesn't make sense. So a person who wants to be inspired in life has to be happy. Has to be. If do Hashem simple, so Hashem simple. Be happy in thanksgiving for everything that Hashem gives him in life, and especially the opportunity to to learn Torah and to do mitzvahs. Each one is an infinite opportunity that is given gratis, free from Hashem, without any schus that I should uh, receive anything. But then uh, we went on to say that uh, if we, like in general, in Torah Bichlal and Pnimis Ater Bifrat, to understand the concept, you contemplate, meditate upon the word, because it's like it says in Tanya, that Hashem creates everything through its name. So the word for for inspiration is Hashura. 
fact, the greatest muscle in the Chabad tradition, the greatest Chosid of Chabad, who is considered to be the muscle, Behi Ayyidi of Chabad, his name is Rabbi Isaac of Roma. And one of his deepest uh, books is called Maimar Ashif Simcho, the, the Maimar of Lowliness and Joy, and how they are virtually one and the same. And in that Maimar, which is a long, a big book, he explains the most fundamental thing to his understanding and to our understanding of Hasidus. He says that the whole Sefer Atanya and all of Hasidus is based on three concepts. That the three concepts are Hishtavshus, Islavshus, and Hashro. The things evolve. There's any mentality that a person has that that life operates in cause and effect, like mechanics. So that's a mechanical uh, approach to reality, that things happen because of cause and effect. That's called an evolutionary attitude towards reality or towards li- life. And that's called Ishtaushos. Ishtaushos, Sedra Ishtaushos, Ilo Olo, the terminology of Hasidus. First he had one thing, and there was something potential in that, and the Elo gave rise, or gave birth to the Olu that came out of it. And that's the way it goes, a chain reaction. Shoshos is like a chain reaction of cause and effect. So that mentality, that fiso of, of, of Metzius Bichlal, of the world, and all the world Bichlal, that's the, that's the lowest mechanistic, we'll call it, Fiso of reality, but it's it also has validity to it. It's not invalid because we speak of ishtalshus elements. If you open up the the Tanya, you'll find that word. Because you see, he says that these are the three most important words to pick up when you're learning Tanya, which is the Torah Shabbich Sav, the written Torah of Torah Shachtidus. So you find that word. Uh, very, very many times, he starts But once more, in, in, in the soul, that corresponds to this mentality, a cause and effect, evolutionary type mentality. A, a much, much uh, higher mentality and uh, experience of life and reality is his lapsus. His lapsus means enclosement that one facet or one dimension is enclosed and operatively enclosed within another dimension. Either you sense the inner dimension at work, so to speak, or enlivening the outer dimension, or you don't, but it's there. It's either hidden or it's concealed or it's revealed, but it's present. And that's really what's happening. It's not that there's just a chain reaction of events, of cause and effect, one giving rise to the next. But that something is, is happening. Now, that concept that he starts with is called chayus, that something is alive. Because in order to be alive, there has to be a soul and a body, a nasham and a goof, an or and a kli. And the or is operating through the means of the kli. Either the kli conceals the presence of the or, or it reveals the presence of the or. In any event, life is the first concept of, of Ishtashus is not alive. It's, we said before it's a mechanistic understanding of reality. This is a very, very simple point and deep point to upslog secular evolution. The secular evolution comes to to explain life development. That's what it's all about. It's not about the mineral kingdom. It's about the vegetable and animal kingdom. That's what it's trying to to explain. But the very definition here in the Hasidus of life, it can never be explained by Hishtashlus, by just one thing producing another thing. Because its definition is, is a, it's a different uh, space altogether. It's one thing entering another thing and giving life to another thing, the soul and the body. Or the totally different uh, vision. Obviously it requires a, 
Hergesh or Hasidish or Haskol in order to appreciate what he means. But that's the, the next word. And that's the word which is most, even more than time, you'll find the concept of Hislav Shuls, even the Hislav Shuls. But for all three concepts appear, and they're all very, very important. And as we'll see, they correspond to actually three different ways of learning Kabbalah itself. That's what Rabbi Isaac, that's the final uftu of Rabbi Isaac. The third, which is above, above uh, his lapsus, which means that one thing is enclosed in another, is this R word. The word that we're talking about, the word that, the, the word that relates to Chedesh Oder, because Chedesh Oder is, is, especially in this year of two Oder, the 60 consecutive days of Simcha. And Simcha is for us together. As we'll say, Simcha is something that a person is in. It's not in you. It's really something, it's, it's an order that you're in, just like the concept of Ashra, inspiration. Inspiration of an inspired person, inspired soul is in something. Something is encompassing him. It's a makif. That makif is called hashro, that a person is inspired. An example, for instance, that he gives many, many examples, but uh, a very uh, simple example that he gives, a chasidosh example of what, ha- what it means to be inspired. He says that inspiration is like a gabai, a, a good gabai of a rebbe, of the rebbe. That if the gabai would be by himself in his own daladamus, his own uh, home situation, he would be just like a regular person. He, he, he himself is a regular person. He has to eat, he has to sleep. So many hours people sleep, so many times a day people eat. But in the presence of the Rebbe, he becomes uplifted when something takes him and he becomes so uplifted that just like the Rebbe doesn't have to sleep, so he also doesn't have to sleep. It's not his essence, but he's caught up in a, in a positive way. He's caught up in the in the makif of the the kedusha, the holiness of the Rebbe, that he is always in his in the daladamus, in the presence of the Rebbe. So he, he calls this an example of it, an inspired state. So in this type of inspired state, it's, it's not really you. Is once more, if you walk out, it will stop being the Gabi of the Rebbe, it will fade away. And will just become once more a regular person. That he needs his hours of sleep and his hours of uh, and his time to eat. But so long as he is serving this function, he's in the Daladamas of the Rebbe, he, he becomes inspired, which means that he's uplifted to a, a, different, uh, a different reality altogether. So it's not in a Shoma in a goof which is called Islav Shuz, which is a life, and something else. <laughs> we'll not now explain this too much, but in one of the places that we find this distinction in other, in other terminology, other words, the words of prophecy, is in the beginning of Yecheskel, where the first chapter of Yecheskel is called Maisim Kova, which is the deepest uh, part of the, of, the, of the Tanakh. And there he speaks of Chayos, the angels that are called Chayos, which mean, literally means living beings. So the angel himself is defined as being something alive. That's why the definition of life is, is an ashoma in a goof. But then the Novi speaks of, of, of ruach ha-chayo, ve'ifani, ruach chay bahimo, that if for, in order for the, the chay to move in a certain direction, he has to have some spirit. So if one reads the first chapter of Yechezkel, the idiom repeats itself several times that there is the living being in itself, and it's, it's alive, but in order for it, say if we want to apply it to ourselves, in or, order for it to make a decision where to go, and obviously our decision should all be inspired by the Torah person should be doing what the Torah says. A, a Jew, a Yid, should always be receiving inspiration. His inspiration once more in the, in the Tanakh, in the Torah, the inspiration is usually connected with the word of Ruach. It is ju- it's actually just like in English. That the word inspiration in English means spirit. Inspiration. So the same thing is true in, 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 in the Torah. 
that to be inspired means that you have some spirit. And what is the spirit doing? It's it's direct. It's either one's part, either consciously or unconsciously, inspiring you to do something. A person doesn't know where to go. Baal Shem Tzu says the greatest uh, Hashkoch is also, which is the presence of Hashem in one's life, is when a person takes a takes a walk. Mi Hashem mit'ade geber kinon that's the, the verse that the greatest Hashkoch is in when a person's going because actually when a person's going like it says there are many little quotations Yom Yom, Hashem is taking there, taking him there he doesn't know why he's going there he's taking him there for a reason that he has some shlichus simple meaning of shlichus he has to say a brocha at that place because there's some nitzis, there's some uh, spark all these sparks that's waiting could be waiting for him since the creation of the world, for this particular soul, which is capable of being with one of this particular nitzes by saying a brocha, or sometimes it even says just by being in the presence of a, of a, of a, of a neshama elokis, of a Yiddish neshama, that has a moon on a kodesh poruch, and that just the fact that there's a, a neshama that believes in, in Hashem, and is here, that's a, that itself, even without the brocha, is sufficient to, to uplift, to elevate, and to clarify the the nitzvot that has been waiting for him for thousands of years or forever long to be redeemed. So once more, Hashra is more than just being alive. It's, it's being directed in one's life, whether consciously or unconsciously, by, by a spirit that encompasses me. That's called the Ruach HaChayu. There's a Ruach, a spirit above the living being. Now, obviously, the Rebbe himself, if we we'll go back to the Moshe of Rabbi Isaac, so his level of inspiration is higher than the Gabbai. The Gabbai, because he just gets it from the Rebbe. But as we said before, if he would move out of the presence of the Rebbe, he would, he would lose it. But the Rebbe has it <coughs> essentially, because for him, the Makif has united and become a Pnimi, which is a Nesias hafokim phenomenon. It's a paradox that what is defined as a makif has become his very essence. So obviously that's a much higher level of hashra. But both of them are to understand what hashra means. And, and just the first thing we're trying to say is what is the word? Because in, in order to go further, we have to know what the word is, like everything. So. The word for this is hashra, and going back to the Isaac, the Isaac says that the three most important words in all of Hasidus, beginning and primarily as as discussed in Sefer Atan, are these three words: Hishtalshlus, Hislavshlus, and hashra. Now, then, at the end of his treatise, much more it's a big book, he says that actually these are three trends or three streams of Pnimius Atero of teaching Kabbalah throughout the generations. The, the pre, in, in uh, the way they say it in English, the pre-Lurianic Kabbalah, which means the Kabbalah of the Ramak. He just calls it the Kabbalah of the Ramak. And that's a Kabbalah which is purely based on, on the Hishtashos. It's a Kabbalah of the Hishtashos Eilimus. It just describes how every, how the world evolve. Well, it's more like a chain evolve from one another. It can be very, very interesting. It captures, the way he describes it, it captures the imagination, even it suggests, in a certain sense, that it's happening all the time, which is a Baal Shem Tov idea, that even the things in the Ramak, there's a letter from the Baal Shem Tov himself, that he says, as many of my deepest principles, you'll find them in the Ramak, not in the Arizal. It's a very important thing. So, even the fact that that creation is continuous, which is one of the basic foundations of the Chesidus. So in a certain sense, you'll find that more in the Ramak even than the Arizal. He doesn't say such a thing explicitly. But the way that creation is unfolding itself, manifesting itself in the Ramak is pure Hishtashos, because he doesn't have partsufim. Now, in Eitz Chaim, we know that 99% of the Eitz Chaim, the Kishi Arizal, the Arizal himself did not write. 
is Talmud Muva, because of Chaim Vital goes in. But there are certain exceptional pieces, little pieces, that's the Ksav Yad of the Arizal himself. One of which, that is written in Eitz Chaim, in the name of the Arizal, says, he himself says that my, my Chidush is Partsufim and Hislavshus. That one Partsuf enters into another Partsuf. But if you just have Sfirot that are either points or little lines, so even uh, figuratively, you can't understand that one can enter into the other. Just one can give rise to the other. They can evolve one from the other. But not that one is inside the other. But the way the Arizal pictures the maturity of the parts of him, that each part of develops into a full human-like, we call it persona, partsuf, figure, which is alive. So it's possible even physically that this, of course, can become a problem because you can't uh, materialize in any way your our meditation of elokus. <coughs> nonetheless, the Arizal does do it so physically that we can imagine like one person, let's say, we have here two people sitting around the table, just one entering into the other. It's like Ibor. It's one of the possibilities of how a soul, for instance, will return to this world after it appears to have passed away from this world. Either Gilgul or much, a much easier way to understand it, or to address it, is called Ibor, Ibor Nashon. That the soul returns and enters some living body that has its own soul, but nonetheless, this other persona can enter, either take over or not take over, just contribute in some way as a partner with the previous neshama, and now operate within the, the body of this living person. That's he said. It's not. It's, it's a, this is like a real uh, sounds real mystical idea, but it's uh, it's probably the Alter Rebbe explains the tongue. He says that everybody can be a dish can definitely be a Benoni. But he says in Tanya that you, you don't don't forget totally about the possibility that you can be a you can be a tzaddik. How can you be a tzaddik? He says Ibra Nasham. That maybe a tzaddik will enter you if you merit. And the Shama of a real tzaddik will enter you and then you'll become a tzaddik. And that's definitely a possibility that everyone should consider and try to uh, to merit. In any event, that's, a, that's an example of, of his lapshus. The Rizzo himself writes that this is my chidush. That there are, since there are well-developed, we call them mature parts of him, it's possible for one to enter into the other. And for one to enter into the other, and this is all, the way all of the worlds operate, that Atik is inside Arich. It has a head which does not enter within Arich. But Zat, it's seven laws, we don't enter within Arich. And the same thing goes for Arich, that Arich, the head of Arich, does not enter into the other parts of him of Abba and Ima and Zun. But from the shoulders down of Arich, it's all inside the other parts of him, of the world of Hasidus. So again, this is the, this, it just sounds like words and pictures, but the Arizal says that this, this is the whole Hiddish of my Kabbalah versus the Kabbalah of the Ramah. And uh, again, that's the, in the terminology of Tanya, that's the difference between Hislavshus, which is life, versus Hishtavshus, which is just evolution. But then comes the Baal Shem Tov. And the Baal Shem Tov, Rav Isaac says, is a different Kabbalah altogether. Not Kabbalah, sorry. That's a new, a totally new dimension. It's Ashra, inspired Kabbalah. Inspired Kabbalah means that it's not just a bunch of parts of him that one enters another, but it's reality experiencing Hashem, infinity, and so because it seems from the soul picture, see. That it's possible to experience the ends of here encompassing me and becoming bottle, kulakameke lechoshif. 
and just being, as we said before, like the, the that Gabai, that Shamash in the presence of the Rebbe, just becoming uplifted to a place that it's not really your place, unless you you yourself become like a Rebbe, that it becomes an essential part of your essence. So actually, in Ashraal, there, there are two levels itself. And so this is this is the the basis of all study of Hasidus and the appreciation of what Hasidus is more than in Kisvi Arizal and more than the pre Arizal Kabbalah. But for the three Kabbalot, Kabbalah of the Ramak and Kabbalah of the of the Arizal and Kabbalah of the Baal Shem Tov. And this concept now we're talking about is the Baal That's now we can understand why the Baal Shem is so much also in the Simcha, the Hasidim is supposed to be happy. If you're not happy, you know, Shailash, you're a really, a really a chosid before. It's a chosid in Darf Zayn Freyle, Mul Zayn Freyle. If he's a real chosid, because once we're a chosid, that's the way a chosid should be defined, as, as an inspired Jew. That's the way chosidim always were. Just that just before somebody asked, but, but nowadays we're all not happy, nobody's happy. You don't see happy people. And this was after the class today, so. Directions. What is? Where are all the happy people that you're talking about? So it's, it's really a problem. It's not, uh, it's not the way it should be, especially this month of August. But in general, we have to be happy and we have to be inspired. It's virtually the same thing. So all this was just uh, some words of introduction about this word hashva. That that's a word from Tanya, and that that's the word that the the Isaac picks out is the most important word in Hasidus. And the idea of being inspired is the objective of Hasidus. That your life as a Yid in Shlichus should be an inspired life. And obviously that implies that, that you're going to be very, very happy all the time. And it does not mean, as the Middle Rebbe explains, that you won't have an inner point of of existential anxiety that Mashiach is not here. Actually, they go together. It's just that that point is so deep in one's heart that it in no way blemishes the exuberance of the simcha that you have in your outer consciousness. Once more, the Kundusay Spilos of the Mito Rabbi ends, its conclusion is that the perfect state is to have a point of Moros that's the word that he uses, in the innermost point of the heart, but in a way that it does not spread out. It's there. And the perfect example that we can see this is the Rebbe himself. The, that point was definitely there, that's why he would cry out and say, Ad Mose, and cry and want us also to reach, to reach that level. At the same time, how to live one's life, Everything should be good, even in Golos. That's the Maimur Atzav. We should have Boni Chayim Zeinu Revichi, Chulo Revichi. At the same time, that is in no way contradicts the present, that innermost point that Mashiach is not here yet, and that is so painful in a way that a per- that it's. If that point would spread out and take over, one could not exist. That's why it must remain as a point. From time to time, a person cries out, Ad Mosque. But one's general state of consciousness is the, this inspired state of Yivdo Hashem Basim. And so that was an introduction, much more. The whole introduction was just in order to get to the to the to real to recognize what the word is because as we said all of Hasidus is that you have to know the proper word and the proper word is Hashra that is the Kabbalah of the Baal Shem Tov it's also that's a sh- you know, shru yovinim that we're going to talk about that's also we have a happy marriage so it's an inspired marriage the same word as Hashra. That's 
what we're reading about now in the Torah, we're also in Mikdosh or Shulchan de Bezeich, and the Hashem dwells in our midst. That's called that experience of Hashem dwelling in our midst is an experience that encompasses us all together, and that's an experience of, of Hashra. And obviously, to feel Hashem in your presence is Simcha. There's a famous marshal of the of the, of, the, of Hasidus, not just in Chabad, of other Hasidic uh, masters. How does a person feel, a simple peasant, that the king was exiled, was driven out of his palace by enemies, and the king himself fled. And in fleeing, he ran into a house of a very simple peasant, someplace outside of the town. So how does that peasant feel? So that's an example that's given in many Hasidic uh, sources. He feels two antithetical feelings simultaneously. But he's a true servant of the king, and he is in so existential pain that the king, the king has to run away from his palace. And it's in the depth of the darkness of exile. On the other hand, simultaneously, the very same moment, he's in exuberant, once more, yes, exuberant simple that could I ever have dreamt in the, my wild, wildest dream that I would ever merit that the king should visit me in my house, in my Daladamas. That's a famous, a very important uh, motion that's given how one can experience two opposite antithetical extremes. These are two extremes simultaneously. All right, so, so once more, the word is Ashra. So when, what we then went on to say is that, you, that Al-Pipshat, as a middle, as an attribute in the soul, it most has to do with Simcha, Ashra, to be inspired. But one of the things that Kabbalah and also Hasidus, a person uh, contemplates when, when he knows that this is the word, this is the Hebrew term, that, that our Kodesh Baruch is creating this concept with this, with this word. So one of the things, uh, in studying the word itself, it's actually the last, or the lowest level of studying a word, is taking its numerical value, its gemat. And in our particular case, this word is 511, Hashra. And it equals exactly another very, very simple word, the Moshe Nakedesh, which also is, is a, a, a midah, a, an attribute of the, of the soul. And that's the one we're going to talk about this evening first. It's, it equals the word tikva. Tikva is hope. Now, just like any other word and concept, there's loads of Hasidus about Tikva. If you want to look up a word and how it's brought in Hasidus, how to explain in Hasidus, you, now we can use the Sefer Ali Kutim of the, of the Tzemach Tzedek and take out the volume of Tov, and then you'll find most everything the Tzemach Tzedek talks about referring to, uh, to Tikva. For instance, the, the famous uh, Hasidic saying, Tracht Kuvetzangu. So that's a simple, down to earth expression of what Tikva means. That you have hope, and you, your hope is so strong that you, because of your hope, you think positively. And you think positive, you're always sure that it's going to be good, and you should be sure, and it will be good if you're sure that it will be good. So actually, it can be like, at the present moment, appear to be very not good. But you're so, so sure in your tikva, tikva is connection, as we're going we're gonna to explain. You're so connected to what's going to be good, as in your thought, trust with design good, that you already can be very, very happy. When things are not so good, it's, there are different ways of being happy. Person is always supposed to be happy. One way, one one reason to be happy is because if something is bad, it's, it, Hashem is doing it. Hashem is good. Why is He doing a bad thing? Something that appears to be bad. So it's like it says in Tanya, Perak is coming from very, very. High. The good is so high that 
our finite vessels are unable to to conceive and understand and experience the good. So the pure soul has to be bad, but it's really very, very good. Or in very simple terms, if something uh, if a person falls and then and, uh, and bruises himself, so he says kapara sabes. So kapara, the atoning for something. So that's that's true. That's the case. So he can be very happy. I, 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 it was just a little bruise. It didn't hurt so much. And it was a big kapara sardinus. So, so he can, that itself can make him very, very, very happy. He says, if a person doesn't have his in 30 days, he's in trouble. He's received his Elam Haba already. <laughs> so you better hope that if, if, if it's almost about to be 30 days without having some uh, problem, some Yisurim, better make sure to, <laughs> to fall or something. Before thirty get thirty days go by without without any yisurim whatsoever, right? So that's a simple way. That's called the tabolat yisurim be simple. But the other way is that you're so sure that it's going to be good. There's two different things altogether. You're so sure that things are going to be good that you're already living in the future. That you know that your hope is so strong that you're already there. That's trafkul betzaynus. So you're already happy in the in the in the cure. And the person is not well, but he's going to be well. He's going to be cured, even if it takes a miracle. The miracle is going to happen, and he's already there in the miracle. So his, his simcha is, is is simcha of the future, not just of, of the past and the present. But the first simcha is even if things are, are bad, but you can definitely be very very happy in the present, based upon the past. There was something wrong in the past, and that little fall and that little bruise that did the tikkun. Baruch Hashem. The Chaim. You make a Favrengen and uh, everything is like that. So, the Chaim. Even, even though no, nobody fell. <laughs> nobody got bruised at all. The Chaim, the Chaim. <laughs> Oh, 
Right, so we began saying that this word, our word hashra, inspiration, equals tikva, equals hope, good hope. There's a posting in Yeshaya that says tzav le tzav, kav le kav, which has many, many different interpretations to it. But what it suggests, definitely, however it's interpreted, there's a interplay or interrelation between tzav and kav. Well, tikva, the word tikva comes from the word kav. This is the, if all of the chasidus about tikva, about hope, which equals hashra. So what we're going to have to understand is that it, the two-letter subroot is kav. Huh. And that's the way chasidus always explains what tikva is about. It's about, about kav. Now we know from learning chasidus that kav, the chasid uses the word kav, so immediately immediately thinks of the Kav and souls. Oz Yiboka Kashacha Olecha that a ray of light permeates the darkness of the vacuum created by the Tzimtzum Arishon even though the Tzimtzum Arishon is low keep shoot, as well explained but nonetheless it appears initially to be a dark vacuum then all at once just like the morning following the night a Oz Yiboka, which is called the soul root of Yaakov, the boring soul before the Simsum is the soul root of Avonot. And the Simsum itself is the soul root of Yitzhak. And then comes Oz Yiboka, which is the Ka of Rachmin, that shines, radiates into the into the Mokama Simsum, and around which all of the worlds and all of reality is created. So in any event, that word kav, and we're going to have to explain what that means, that's the basis of the concept of, of, the, of tikva. Tikva is from the word kav. And since we find this verse that many times over juxtaposes, I mean, that it connects together the two concepts of tzav and kav, tzav le tzav, tzav le tzav, kav le kav, kav le kav, zeh sham, zeh sham. It repeats the whole thing repeats itself twice so so uh, we understand that just like Tzav this is the mimer of the Rebbe that we spoke of last night the mimer of Atot Tzav the Tzav the Rebbe explains Tzav means Tzavto Tzavto is connection it's the power that Moshe Rabbeinu has the Rebbe has to connect souls Jewish souls to Oren and it's also the power that the Rebbe has to connect souls one to another were the two points, uh, the two levels of connection that, that, that the Rebbe says in his Maima that we discussed uh, last night, whoever was there. In any event, just like Tzav implies the power to connect two things together, Tzav to, the same is true of Kav, because a Kav, Kav is like a road. And the road connects two cities or two destinations together. It's a, a line. The purpose of a line is to connect two points together. All right, so now, what, what does it mean that to hope is, has to do with the line? So the way it's, it's, it's understood in Hasidus is based on, the, on a verse that everybody knows because we say it throughout the month of Elund and Tishrei and Toshana Rabba twice a day, the Dovid Hashem Ori, in the final verse, and we also say it every day in Davening, before Enkelokeno. 
and other times during the day. One of the verses that we repeat the most throughout the day is Kavi El Hashem. Chazak v'yamet libecho v'kavi el Hashem. Hope to God. Be strong and be courageous in your heart. V'yamet libecho v'kavi el Hashem. And then once more, hope to Hashem. So the point that the, the, now this is the essence of the of the, this evening, that that pasuk is for us a great pasuk of of being in a state of an inspired state of being. If one is able to be mekayim always that pasuk that no matter what is happening in his life or in the collective life and experience of the Jewish people and the whole world, he always has this this positive first of all positive attitude positive drive which is Kaveh El Hashem Chazak V'yamet Sibecha V'Kaveh El Hashem Nocham Ol V'Kaveh El Hashem We have to explain what it means that Nocham Ol why it's twice Kaveh El Hashem A person that is in that state so he's that's one of the psukim which which describes an inspired state but before we said an inspired state is simply being happy I was saying something that requires, demands more his pain in us. An inspired state is this state of Kaveh El Hashem, the Huda. Now, how does Hasidus understand that possible? And other psukim that have this word Tikva in it, Kaveh, we understand that, that, the, that the power of hope is to create, it's like just this permeating Kav, ray of Orient Sof, into a vacuum. It's the power to draw down a line, like a person is drowning, so somebody throws him a, a line, a rope. Tikva is the power to have that line drawn down into your present experience of, a va- of darkness, of vacuum, that line of light, that it comes from the infinite light of Hashem, but you don't need infinite light, just the opposite, maybe infinite light will blind you, it's too much for you. You need just a, a ray of light from that infinite source that is th- like thrown down or drawn down into your mitzios, which is you're in some sakon or some bad way. So the way it's explained in Chassidus is that line, that's exactly what it means to hope. To hope that things will be good means it's a power of the soul that actually your your potent Hope is drawing down that 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 kav v'chut hatsala, which is going to you're going to have to catch on to it, and it's going to pull you out of your of your problem. But it's a ray, it's a ray of light into a state of darkness. And once more, it has to be finite in order to reach you exactly where you're at right now. But it's coming. From an infinite source. Now, the fact that it repeats itself, the pasuk Kavi El Hashem, and then in the middle it has these two other words, which are Chazak via Metzli and then once more Kavi El Hashem. So first we'll explain why there there are two Kavi El Hashem's in the beginning and the end. So once more, the way it's explained, Chassid is that the Kav, the Kav. Or and so which enters into the vacuum and around which all of the worlds of the worlds which are intended to be tikkun or the says layers for Dira Batahtenim, all of those worlds are around the Kav. They're also all holding on to the Kav. The Kav is the Nishama of all of the worlds. It has two dimensions to it. It's called Chitzein Yusakav and Pinim Yusakav. In the terminology of Chassidus. In the Chitzein Yusakav, the other dimension of the Kav is the power of differentiation, called Keach Hayischalkus, in the terminology of Chassidus. Because in order to create worlds, there are, there's a difference between states of reality. There's a difference between the ro- world of Atsilos and the world of Priya and the world of Yisir and the world of Asiya. Sometimes a Kav 
is considered to be a ruler, a yardstick. It has to measure out and differentiate between the different worlds that Hashem intends to create. Neither one of the of the various worlds and actually infinite levels of reality, no one exactly resembles the other. That power of differentiation, that's the definition of the Fitzin Yusaka. Which means also that when the kav is by hope is brought into my life, that I myself am bringing this kav into my life, this channel. I'm a ka- hope means to channel God into my life. To channel God. Hope is a power that I channel God into my present situation. So if I am channeling God by hoping into my life right now, but I want God to relate to me just as I am, that I'm Yitzchok and I'm not somebody else. So it means that I want to channel godliness or God into my differentiated state of being. Because I'm, I have a problem. Yanko doesn't have a problem, the same problem that I have. I have to hope for the good. In my, that's what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping with with uh, with faith, but it's it's more than faith. It's hope. But it's it's due to some real situation that I'm in, not somebody else's. In. So I have to channel God into my differentiated state of being. So. Where is that coming from? That's coming from the Chitzen Yosakal. That's the way it's explained in Chassidus. That's called Kea Chais Chalkus. The Chitzen Yosakal. That's the beginning. That's the first Kabel Hashem. But after we go through the other two words, that we're going to have to explain what they mean, Chazak V'yamech V'becha, then it says once more, Nochamor, V'kabel Hashem. V'kabel, the second V'kabel Hashem is the Pnim Yosakal. What is the Pnimi Sakav in Hasidus? It's called Kea Chayis Kaladus. Well, these are the definitions from all my Mori Hasidus and the Rabbi Rashab and Ayn Beis. But to learn about the Kav, so the Kav will always be explained to have to possess two powers. The first power is to create differentiated states of reality and then to relate to different differentiated states of being, which means different individual souls that every soul is like a world. But the inner power of the Kav takes all of those differentiated worlds and reveals that it's all one. It's all mikshachat, just like the minorat ora, which is a symbol, the most important symbol for the Jewish people is the menorah and the Beis HaMikdash, as we learned about now. And the menorah is all mikshachat, it's all just one piece. You can't put different pieces together. Just from one essential piece of gold, all of the different parts, first of all, all the seven, the seven branches and candles of the menorah all come out from one thing. You don't stick, paste them together. Each different candle is a different soul root, and each, each different soul root has a multitude of individual particular souls. And there are, there are kishutim, there are 42 different, very particular individual kishutim in the menorah. And it's all the ornaments. And it's all one, it all is not, nothing is stuck together. It's all one, one piece. What does it mean in my life, once more, if I'm hoping for Hashem? It means that I realize that my situation is part of a much more general situation. It's indifferentiable from the goddess of Am Yisrael Bichlal and the Shechini. That I am not an and never was and is am not and never will be a differentiated state of being. That's why every mitzvah that we do is b'shem kol yisrael. It's a different realization altogether. That it appears p- people appear to be different, but we're we're one essence. If I look at the people, the physical eyes. That's why the physical eyes deceive, lie. I see things 
different, split. I don't see as when Mashiach will come, ayin ba'ayin yiru b'shu Hashem tziyo, that things are not, that deep down things are not different. We're all one. We're all one. That revelation is called the pnim. That's called kechayis kalalus, which is the pnim yusakav. That's called what to like say the simple thing that the Rebbe would talk about. Ah, not just avas yisrael. Avas yisrael can still be in a state of differentiation. That I'm me and you, you're you, and I love you and you love me, and I try to do good to you and you try to do good to me. But achdus yisrael is is the miksho achas. That we're one. We're essentially one essence. That comes once more. That's the power of the Pnimi Sakav to, re- to manifest, to, to reveal that all of those different worlds that, that, that I just created, so to speak, and it, they appear to be different. I'll say another thing about differentiation. In Hasidus, differentiation doesn't mean that one is, it's not as it appears to be that we said before that the Pnimi Sakav is like a ruler. It just measures things out. The, what it me- it doesn't measure how big you are, that this is a big guy and this is a little guy. It's not something which is, which is quantitative. It's something which is qualitative. It's a qualitative measure. And qualitative also, it, what, what is the quality that it's measuring? So in Hasidus, the quality that it's measuring is the level of beetle. That's a great chidush of Hasidus. That the difference between the world of Atsirus and the world of Brio is the level of beetle that is experienced in that world to Hashem. That's the difference. It's not that one has so many trees and the other has less trees or less rivers. Even though all the rivers are also in the world of Atsirus, everything you see here. It's also a very important uh, thing that Rabbi Isaac explains throughout his Hasidus. But the difference is the difference of the level of beetle. So as soon as you realize that, you realize that the, the differentiation is a very deep thing. So if we realize how deep differentiation is, that differentiation is different levels of beetle, so now we can even more appreciate how great it is, his kaladus. That his kaladus means n- n- no ma- th- that no matter what, that the world of Atsidus has true beetle to Hashem, and af asitiv, has not has no beetle to Hashem, no conscious beetle to Hashem. Nonetheless, they're one and the same. That revelation is is from the Pneumius Kav. So once more, what does it mean vis-a-vis a person hoping to God? It means that my, the the cure of my ailment is not ultimately going to be just my cure, but the real cure is only if the whole Jewish people is cured, the whole of reality, the whole of humanity, and the whole world, and all the worlds are cured. Because you cannot differentiate between me and anybody else. That's, as we said before, in in our in our the Shem Yuchud that we have in mind before every mitzvah, we say it once a day, but we're supposed to have it in mind before every single mitzvah, so the Tachlis is B'Shem Kol Yisrael. It's also a chidush of Pnimis Atero that has no manifest, explicit source in Nigle. That when you put on Filin, you're just putting it on for yourself. You're not, can't, you're not putting it on for, for somebody else. I'll be Nigle, but I'll be Pnimis, you are putting it on for someone else. That every Jew, we're so connected to one another that even feeling or some mitzvah which just depends upon your body also is is affecting someone else. As was mentioned before, the greatest level of hashra is in the home between man and wife. In the zakhu, if they marry, is dwelling there, that's hashra. So even if, for instance, Kishwe Ariza says that what we just said about putting on feeling, why don't women have to put on feeling? Because their, their husbands put it on for them. That's what it says in Kabbalah. So that's the, a simple example that, that, that the unity is so great that, uh, that you're actually doing it for someone else. That's what becomes manifest in the, in the home. In any event, that, that is the second hope. The second hope is the is revealing the pnimius akav. Hope means drawing, 
channeling God into your life or into our lives. That's what hope means. And the ability to do that is, is an inspired state of being that I'm able to channel God into my life. First, it's into my differentiated state of being. And then it's into the collective, unified state of being of the whole Am Yisrael. Now, but in order to, to reach from the first Kabe El Hashem, from the Chisein Yusaka, to reach the second Kabe El Hashem, which is the Pnim Yusaka, so there are two things in the middle, which is Chazak V'Ahmetzibech. Be strong and be courageous in your heart. You know that Hashem, when he addressed, he told you, Moshe Rabbeinu to appoint the the successor, the next Manik, the next Moshe Rabbeinu, the one that's actually going to bring the Jewish people into the land of Israel, and inherit the land of Israel. So over and over again he says, Chazak ve'emas, Chazak ve'emas. That's an idiom that repeats itself in the Torah, at the end of the Torah, and also in the beginning of the book of Joshua. So Hashem and the Jewish people even say to him, to Joshua, the person that gets the most reinforcement and empowerment of Chazak ve'emas is Joshua. It's a very important thing. That, that manhig, that leader which is getting it from Moshe Rabbeinu, but he's, has, he's not going to be responsible for enacting the promise of bringing the Jewish people really and truly into the promised land. So he has to have tremendous chizuk and imuts. What's the difference between those two words? And we have to understand, first of all, what those two words mean for, uh, for everybody. And also why they are the intermediate, the Mamutza Machaber between the first Kaveh El Hashem and the second Vikaveh El Hashem. It's Kaveh El Hashem, Chazak, Vikaveh El Hashem, Vikaveh El Hashem. So there are many, first of all, Shivim Panim in Torah, but there are many in Hasidic school, so there are many explanations. One explanation is that Chazak is being strong. If a person, is, once more, he hopes for the good and he's sure that the good will track good, the time good. But at the same time, in order for it to actually manifest itself, he has to be mischazik, to strengthen himself in what? So the word chazak, in particular, it can refer to everything, but in particular it refers to Torah, learning. Because the Gemara says that the, either three or the two, give so three or four things, shrichim chizuk, and the most important of which is start learning Torah. And even when Hashem tells Yoshua and entering the land of Israel, Chazak so he says explicitly, that the Chazak is that you not all of the you're going to have a lot, a lot of the work to do, a lot of mundane chores. That was the Chita Maraglim. The Maraglim, their sin was that they were afraid of entering the land of Israel because it's going to it's going to distract them from Ruchnias. In the desert, they had it good. But as soon as they're going to have to plant and sow and plant and then be involved with Kashmir's, so they were afraid that that's going to distract them from, from Nukhnias. But it has to show them to think like that. That's the hefech of uh, what Hashem created the world for. He created the world for Dirvet Achtin, the place that Hashem is always looking at and revealing himself is Eretz Yisrael when a Yid is able to unite his, his Nukhnias with the God, Dafka with the God. So once more, for, the, for that reason, Yoshua has to be strengthened all the time. And the word chazak is what Hashem says, that you, you're not going to be very, very busy fighting wars, inheriting the land. But don't forget to learn Torah 24 hours a day. Because obviously, it's a paradox, but it's a state it, it, First of all, it's a desire, it's a conviction. But he has a conviction that I'm, he's going to be 24 hours a day in the in the Hamal, in the Cheder Milchama, consulting with his uh, generals how to how they conquer. But you should know all, 24 hours a day, Yemun Velaylo, Loh Gisabe. That's the Chazak part. What's the courageous? What, what's the difference between Chazak and Emmatz? Emat is courage. His chazak is strong, and Emat is courageous. The word Emat 
The two letters I wrote is Mats, Mem Tzadik. If it eludes, it's why it's taught to Mitzvot. It has other secrets to it that may be mentioned, but the, in relation to Chazak, if Chazak is Tero, so a Mats is Mitzvot. Mitzvot Maisiyah. Now, there are certain mitzvahs that require more courage to do them. A mitzvah is something that you do. It's not just it's not learning Torah. You learn Torah 24 hours a day. If a mitzvah comes along, so the halacha says, the Torah says that you have to stop learning me to do the mitzvah. Because the tachli, once for the tachli, is to do the mitzvahs. There's certainly no greater mitzvah than inheriting the land. But why are mitzvahs related to this word to be courageous? Because, once more, there are certain mitzvahs that are more courageous than others. That it takes more courage to do the mitzvah than others. If a person has to stand up and say the truth of the Torah, faced by danger of being thrown in jail or the like. So he has to have courage. But well, there's some mitzvot that require courage to do the mitzvot. To learn Torah doesn't require, it requires, you have to have strength. You have to have this flesh, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be courageous. Courageous means that you're putting yourself in danger. Who is the most, one of the most courageous, if not the most courageous people in the Torah? It's Mordechai. What the Rebbe always says, that he's the, he's the mold, if there's one role model of the Rebbe himself in the Torah, so that's Mordechai. What's the Indian of Mordechai? Lo He has the courage not to bow down to him, and he knows that he, it's, it's going to be very, very dangerous. Taking that step of courage, lo lo And it really, that's the way it came out to be. It came out to be totally totally dangerous for himself as a person and for the whole Jewish people. <coughs> but he put the whole Jewish people in danger of annihilation. So you could even, as we, as we mentioned last night, that if you would have asked most rabbis what to do, they would have told them not to endanger the whole Jewish people. They would have found some way to get around it to be martyr him, that okay, bow down to Haman, but don't put the whole Jewish people into, into danger. Of annihilation, but no, he was, he was courageous. There are other figures, courage figures. So again, this is this is just parenthetically, this is a very important uh, point for everybody, that people, everybody should have to his record some place after 120, when he goes up to heaven, that he should have at least one time in his life done be be, be courageous, in doing something that required guts. <coughs> A mitzvah that required God's God once more. Most mitzvahs are just it's conviction. Okay, do mitzvahs. You have it. It's called Kabbalah soul. But a, to do a mitzvah that requires God's, that's not so possible. That requires courage. So, the everybody is a topic once more for Cheshvan and Nefesh to try to think do I do courageous mitzvot or just regular mundane mitzvot. In order to reach the second Kaveh El Hashem, from the first Kaveh El Hashem, which means to reach the the Mikshu Achas of Keach HaYiskalagus, which is to channel God and godliness into, into reality, to reveal the unity of reality, versus the first Kaveh El Hashem, which is to reveal the and relate to the differentiation within reality. So you have to have the the chazak of the Torah and the emats, the courage of the mitzvot. Let's make another deal that we didn't say before. Courage is always the courage of the heart. Chazak is relative to the mind. In this verse it says, be strong and may your heart be courageous. Chazak v'yehematz libecho. So you could say that the word libecho, your heart, goes on both on both the verbs. But the truth is that the word your heart goes specifically on the second verb. 
That's the Prat. V'yayamatz libecha. Chazak, be strong. V'yayamatz in your heart should be courageous because courage is, is primarily in the heart. Chozek, strength, can be strength of, of mind. But to be courageous in doing something that requires courage, that's hard. So let's just make a point for all of the Bali Chuba here. Bali Chuba especially. The Tikkun of Bali Chuba, we were talking about Bali Chuba before, is to find courageous mitzvot. People that are not Bali Chuba also have to be courageous, but especially Bali Chuba. That's a, that's a Tikkun for them. The, the Ikar Inya, why does Hashem make Bali Chuba means he put up a soul, a holy soul, into a setting which is not holy, and then he had to find himself. So, first of all, it requires courage to become a Bali Chuba, a real Bali Chuba. And because it requires courage to become, to become a Bali Chuba in the first place, that Bali Chuba is now supposed to be tuned into, or we'll call this programmed, to be courageous in his life. That's a big problem in communities that take Bali Chuva and they try to water down his courage. Just do mitzvahs like everybody else. But the courage element of the mitzvah is forgotten about. Obviously, a great tzaddik himself it's not a al peep shot about Shuvah, like the Rebbe, like Mordechai. He's also the greatest example of courage. That's like the Alta Rebbe himself said that I'm more, that I myself, the Alta Rebbe, am more about Shuvah than I, than Gesh of the Born. Then I born uh, Tzadik. The Magid, when the Yichus, they had a safer Yichus of all of the great ancestors of the family. So one of the famous stories when that when the book burnt, once there was a fire, so it burnt, so his mother was in tears that the whole yichus of the family went up in flames. So he, he was a young kid and he said, don't worry, mom, <laughs> I'll start a new book. So that's... Uh, that's, that's also, to start a new book, you have to be courageous. Otherwise, it's, you're not going to start a new book of, of Yichus. If the old one burnt, burnt up, burnt away. So, so now we're saying that the, the idea is that to reach the Pnimius Akkad, from the Hitanius Akkad, it requires these two levels, Chazak v'Emat Libecha. Because the tikkun itself is not related to Torah and mitzvahs. It's just a direct relationship to Hashem. Once more, it's the ability to, to touch and to reach and to draw that, as we said, to channel God, to channel infinity into my finite life. So it's not relating to Torah and mitzvahs. It's relating to, to Hashem. But in order to reach from the Chitani Sakas, which is to channel God into my differentiated state of being, to reach the ultimate channeling of God into our collective, unified state of being. So that's what, where Torah mitzvahs have to enter. And in, in the strongest possible manner, have to enter. Chazak v'yamesi becha. And that's the, the real reason that they were given in the first place, to come from Chitzen Yisakav. Chitzen Yisakav applies to a certain extent even to all peoples on earth. It's, they're all at some level of differentiation one from the other. But to reach the Pnimius HaKav, which is the second Kavei El Hashem, you have to have in the middle Torah and Mitzvahs. And not Stam Torah and Mitzvahs, but strong Torah and courageous Mitzvot of the heart. That's the, that's the teaching. And a person that goes through all of that, that whole process, so that is a real, fully inspired soul. From the first one, he comes to the second one through the these two chazak v'yamaslibecha in the middle. So to that we'll say l'chaim. L'chaim, l'chaim. Yeah, 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 yeah.
One of the words that comes from the root omets to be courageous in Hebrew is imuts. I'll just remember Avtadik, which is a word from the from the Torah, and especially it's very much used in in modern language. That it means to adopt an adopted child. So the fact that that word emutes comes from courage, that's very, very interesting, that the relationship. I mean, that it takes a lot of, that's an example of what could be a courageous mitzvah to do. So there are definitely is no more courageous thing to do than to adopt someone into your life. We can also see how this now is a, is a power that is taking us to the realization that we're all one and the same, that the Jewish people is all miksha achat. Because every Jew is part of my personal family. Every Jew can be like my son. Who is the greatest figure that uh, that had Mesiros Nefesh to adopt kids? The Baal Shem Tov. The most inspired soul ever to be on earth, perhaps, the Baal Shem Tov. His mitzvah, one of his greatest mitzvot, was to adopt children. He used to bring it. It doesn't mean like nowadays to adopt and the, the kid doesn't know that he's a, an adopted child. And you have to adopt him when he's an infant. No. It means to take some, some needy soul into your house and relate to him just as your own son or your own daughter with all of the love and all of the care and all of the connection, all of the emotional connection, the spiritual connection, and to take him to the chupa to take him to, to, the, to, the, to, to his chasana, to the wedding camp. Because that's exactly what the Baal Shem did in his own life, in his own house. Always 
taking people in and raising them, <coughs> bringing them up and taking them to the to the chuk. But that's a, a simple observation, which is a, a beautiful example of what what it means to do courageous mitzvot. Just the word, what the, the, the very word courage means to adopt. As we said, that that's a that's that's leading us to the second kaveh lashon. Now let's say something further, another word, another point about omens, about courage. Sometimes it says that the, the, root, the root omits is a notrikun, means like a Roshi Tevis, for a phrase, an idiom, emunas tzadikim. Emunas tzadikim. Emunas tzadikim. The word emuna is basically just aleph mem, and a tzadik, the letter tzadik means tzadik, it's just a tzadik. So this is a very, very clear and close. Uh, Notrikun. That omets is short for emunas tzadikim, which means the faith in these kashrus to the tzadik. So if chazak means to strengthen oneself in learning Torah, omets comes from being connected to to a tzadik. Being connected to the is also a direct way to reach the second Kaveh Hashem, to channel God, God and godliness into the collective reality of the Jewish people without any differentiation whatsoever. And that's the only way ultimately to heal my own personal ailment. But that's what the, that's what the verse is talking about. So... So just to, to review, we had the, the first thing we said about Omas is doing a courageous thing like uh, like Mordechai. It's the most courageous thing. Lo yichra lo which is actually endangering yourself. Why? What might be for Bashir to be courageous to do a courageous thing? Bali Tshuva, first of all, we said to be courageous is to be outspoken. But often I'm But to have the ability to, about you, obviously, since he's coming from a certain place, so he should and he does definitely have an ability if he would be able to take the microphone in his hand and ex- express, say the truth. But often I'm but the whole truth, nothing but the truth, like they say, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's all that's, that requires courage. It also requires tikkun, because usually when you take the microphone into your hand, you get your meat bald bell, you become confused. Only a messianic, courageous soul does not become confused by the microphone. And, uh, and he can be courageous, and he can be true, and he can come across Kiddush uh, Hashem. That's one simple thing. But we said to adopt someone. About you himself, how does about you? A non about you was very courageous to adopt about you into his house. So if you were adopted as about you into somebody's house, somebody was in of you, so you should do it how much the more so? Because that's like, like you owe your, as the person says, like I owe my life to that family that adopted me into their house. There's something about the, about the very essence of Bach Shuvah, that he was, that he's adopted even into the community. That's a problem, like I say, if you went through an experience that the community, the from community, the Pacific community, you didn't feel it totally adopted into the community. So that's a problem. So that very problem is not that you should get angry at somebody else. You should know that that's, that's my, that probably is my own very, my own very tiku. To make somebody else feel so at home, exactly what I didn't feel at home. To make someone else feel 100% at home, in my home, in my setting, in our setting. And that's, that's courage. That's a, a certain reflection of that courage. 
The mood of tzaddikim means that we're, the power to be courageous is, is you, we're getting it a lot from the connection with the tzaddik. Why is that also now an immediate entry into the second kaveh Hashem? Because the tzaddik, as, as an individual, represents is a is a, a symbol of the unity of the Jewish people. Tzaddik is olam. What's more, if, if there is not a tzaddik figure in your consciousness and in, that you're connected to, so you don't you, it's, you, it's, you can't picture what it means that the whole Jewish people is one one entity, one essence. But the tzad, that's, one, that's one of the basic purposes of the tzaddik. The tzaddik is supposed to suggest, or supposed to symbolize to every Jew that the whole Jewish people is one. And you see that reflected in the, in the face of the tzaddik. That he's reflecting the unity, it's called the iskalados of the whole Jewish people. The whole menorah is in his face. <coughs> we go back to the concept of persona, so there's a famous story of the Alter Rebbe that he once walked in in surprise to the Maggid in the middle of the night after Chatzot, and he was astonished to see that all of the Partsufim were in the face of the Maggid. He saw Atik and Arif and all of them. <coughs> all of the Partsufim all at once, that they were all there and it's because he entered suddenly. By surprise, all of a sudden he saw that every, everybody's there. Atik's there and Arif's there. It's all there. One's supposed to be connected to a tzaddik and to have a emunah in the tzaddik. That emunah tzaddikim is the experience of the presence of the klal, as mother neshama. A tzaddik is primarily a neshama klalis, an all inclusive neshama. When you look at him in a certain way, you experience that you're seeing the whole Jewish people as one thing. But then that's still a ratzo experience, a run upward. Then you have to bring it down and see it in the Jewish people itself the tzaddik, as he reflects himself in the Jewish people. The, the, the Jewish people, each one of us here around the table, it's all one thing. And that's the second kaveh. But we're, we're trying to explain that this v'yayamat is the, if there's a mumut ha-machaber, there always have to be two sides to a mumut ha-machaber, that one takes hold of one extreme and the other takes hold of the other extreme. So in our mumut ha-machaber, which is chazak v'yayamatzibecha, the chazak of, of, of Torah, is, takes hold of the first kaveh. This Torah also, the Pshat of Torah, is, is that it's differentiated. It differentiates. Lahavdil. That's, that's the nigla of the Torah. That it, the whole idea of Torah is to differentiate between states of reality. That this is Mutter and this is also and this is he's Chayev and he's Zak and Bechudu Bechudu. So the, and the Chazak of Ohgito Begim Valala to know exactly what the Psak what the halacha says about every possible life situation. And that's the Torah taking hold, actually, of the first kaveh. But it's taking hold of it in order to bring it to the second kaveh. But that side of the mutzah, which is taking hold of the second kaveh, which is the etzim yiskalos, mm-hmm. that's the emats, the emasiber, with all of the three ways that we now explained it, that it's in general, courageous mitzvot. In particular, it's this mitzvah which comes from the very same word, imutz. Imutz is also used in Hebrew to adopt even a new idea. To adopt, can either mean to adopt a child, to bring a child or to bring anybody into your home and make him feel 100% at home, that it's his home. Or it can also mean to adopt into one's mentality a new idea that a person didn't have before. And it also, the third thing is that it means to be have this strong connection to that tzaddik who symbolizes the unity of the Jewish people. That emunah tzaddik, which is the notrikan of the emats. And that's what takes us to the second, the kaveh Hashem the channeling of Hashem in such a way that, that all ailments are cured because it's all one and the same thing. You can't cure one without the other, but it's all one. Could you say that yeah. these children of Mordecai were ad- adopted children? Yeah. <coughs> and, uh, not we can say. That's exactly what it says. It says that Mordecai didn't have children. So all the whole Jewish people from Mordecai were adopted children, just like the Rebbe. That's another reason why the Rebbe is most identified with Mordechai more than any other tzaddik in the Tanakh. Because it's all of, this, of, the, of the children, are, they're all adopted children. 
I'll do the first video. That have, don't have it in their mind that people should be doing courageous mitzvot. They have to do with keeping the, the land of Israel for the Jewish people. Courageous is because the kids are thrown into prison. And they, sometimes you have to fight, even fist fight. It's just like Joshua. It's in a different setting. It's in our generation, but that's what's that's what's going on in Eretz Israel. It's fighting against the system. It's girls, 14 years old girls, that rather than say their name and immediately be, be released, are in prison for a month or over a month. And they won the battle against the government because they didn't say their name. And eventually the government gave up and released them. But they stayed in prison for a month for no reason under the earth, under the sun, just in order to express the the uh, opposition to the government and the government policy in Israel, because the land of Israel belongs to us. Right now we see that in Israel itself, the girls, the young girls, are more courageous even than the boys. But they're also courageous boys, but they're more courageous girls even than the boys. No. Huh. The girls say that if the boys could do it, we would we would stop. <laughs> but let's see the boys do it. <laughs> why is that? That's what they say. Why is that? the general gen generation of Mashiach. The elevation of the girls. Women have more gavur. They have more gavur, but in this particular setting, they have more they have more courage. Should, 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 should have happy courage. <laughs> <laughs> 
Inspired, inspired, happy I am 
Just even though I'm not, uh, I don't live here, but I want to welcome Gedalia to the community. Gedalia has we've been uh, close for a long time. I don't know, to leave her. You can tell me exactly how long. But it has to be around uh, 22 years. <laughs> we studied together in a certain place called uh, Nachalat Yisra, I think the name of the Yishvira was. Shubi is from here, I don't know where So how long ago? Where is that? I think it's there, but it may be in a different form. But well, now Merazak is there. Probably some people <laughs> know who Merazak is. Whoever knows who Merazak is, he was the one that continued the program that we had in this uh, Yeshiva. was and still the best drum player in the in the world probably. <laughs> <laughs> so Evan needs to teach his kids drums now. It should be. <laughs> the heart sh should beat in the right rhythm. <laughs> uh, all the heart should beat right. A lot of a lot of courage in the heart. <laughs> the Jewish heart. There should be a lot of simple in this house. Amen. A lot of inspiration, a lot of inspiration come out of this house. And hope. And hope. And courage. courage. And courage. Do you know how to do it? I'm going to come. Just a second. How long has you do it? I don't know. I've never done it.